Oh, shalom, shalom, my friends. We are here on this Shabbos morning. It's 10 o'clock Eastern time. If you haven't set your clocks forward, uh, or what is it, fall, it's spring fall. Well, I don't know how the hell that works, but you do something with your clock two weeks ago. If you haven't done it, do it now, because you want to be wide awake for our guest in the neighborhood. I am staring at the Israeli, am I, I, it's Tamar, right? I'm, I'm staring at the Israeli Shantutsi, her name, is Tamar, but let me tell you about, um, because I'm not sure if I want to talk about Tamar or your friend Tammy Faye Starlight or Tamar. Who are you, by the way? Say say shalom. Who am I talking to even here? Oh, you have to unmute your, hold it. You got to unmute your thing because I can't hear I you. I don't understand this kind of technology because you have to unmute and mute and you're very loud. It's very early. I, I know okay. I'm very loud. This is, this is. Uh, it's very time. early here. I know. Wait, I'll, I will, I'll whisper. Okay. Shalom to you. How are you? Good morning to you. I can't even hear myself. I'm, I'm all right. I'm very excellent. Thank you for having me here. Now you are going to be at Pangea. That sounds like a part of a woman's body, but it's not. It's Pangea is a club somewhere in New York. You're going to be doing your show three Thursday nights, April 7th, 14th and 21st. What should people expect? from your show, Tamar. Of course, what are you going to expect? You're going to get um, the story of my career. You're going to get all the songs that you like uh, from the classic rock. You're going to get a Hebrew translation of Jackson Brown's These Days. You're going to have a good time. You're going to drink and eat if you can take off your mask. Who knows now with this, uh, with this variant? I, you know, I, I take off my talus, but I leave my mask on. That's how I am. That's probably uh, not wise. Oh. Because uh, God will uh, strike you down because, uh, <laughs> because never... you, are doing, you are desecrating not only the Shabbos right now, but you are also desecrating uh, the laws of phylacteries. Oh, well, I, I do that in private. But let me ask you a, a question. Of course, we know this about you because obviously with the payers there, we see that you have a bit of perversion. <laughs> There's nothing perverse about I have a stylist who comes in an hour a week and, and tries to twirl these and, and give them a little bit of glitter. Yes, maybe you should find another stylist <laughs> because I know somebody very good in Borough Park. Oh, really? can... I know a lot of good people. In, I know a lot of bad people in Borough Park. Too. Have, you ever, have you ever been raped in a mitzvah van? Has that ever happened to you? <laughs> have I ever by a... Uh, this is something that I don't call it a uh, rape because it's, um, how do you say, uh, it's fine with me. Oh, but, yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Do, do you like Orthodox Jewish men? Did you go for that kind? Uh, uh, uh? It depends on the, the uh, percentage of uh, the foreskin. <laughs> So, so have you had like 30 percenters? I know when I was first starting out doing that. I don't, if you want this kind of book, you should read uh, about uh, uh, Kim Kardashian because uh, I cannot tell you these kinds of things. I don't, I never had a relationship with, with uh, Kanye West. I don't understand these kinds of percentages. I don't do uh, the um, algebra. I'm, 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 I'm not I'm, Arab. I don't do math. God. No, but, but I'll, I'll give you a very simple, it's a very, uh, Kanye West, right? Okay, uh, here, Jewish men here. That's, that's all really you need to know. Kanye, he's, he has this, Jewish men have this, I have this. Uh, this is much. the Jewish men you know, but the Jewish men I know have this. Oh, oh, oh. So do you, are, are Israeli men, are they really rude and obnoxious or is that just a stereotype? Of course. Oh, yeah. How could you have it any other way? This is how we are. This is what we do. We drive taxis, we tell you the meter doesn't work, and you have to believe us. This is how we are as a people. Wow. Okay. All sorts of anti-Semitism flying around the room today here. It's not anti-Semitism. It's like they say it's, it's just anti-cab driver in Israel. Oh, that's okay. Fair enough. And that is not, that is not a race. That is... Um, I'm not Whoopi Goldberg here defending uh, this, my comments on race. I'm just telling you this is a fact. 
If you go to Israel, you're going to have to deal with this kind of shit. So this is, and I can't believe you are getting me to talk about this on Shabbat. I have uh, the, uh, I have to go to a uh, shul in the five minutes. Does 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 uh, does Israel even have Uber, or are they afraid to because of the? Of course. Oh, they do have it. Yes. Uh, of they, course. They Uber or you know. Way is way. No, they call it offer. Offer. Okay, okay, that makes sense. This this, this is good. So, when was the last time you have you ever? Well, of course, you're from Israel. Uh, when was the last time you were physically in Israel? How do you mean physically? Because spiritually, I am in Israel right now. I'm in Israel. Oh, I didn't realize that you're 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 in is we're talking to you all the way over there. I did not know. Of course, that's why it's four o'clock in the afternoon here. <laughs> so how come you're saying that I'm yelling too loud for the morning? Ah, eh? ah. Eh? I know. I just I thought you were going to get me in this kind of conundrum, but I don't think you understand. The time is not uh, chronological here. Oh, I didn't know. I, I would get you on a conundrum. Don't you look, look at wife. Einstein who says that uh, past, present, and future are all happening at the same time. So, of course, well, I am in Israel, but it's still, uh, even though it's four o'clock in the afternoon, it's also, I get up too early at the alarm rings at 6 a.m. I don't know how this happens. This is just, a, it's a, you have to read the Rashi. You have to read the, the, the commentary and the Torah to Rashi. figure out what kind of, what kind of uh, situation we are in here with this time that I don't understand. You have to read a little bit of Kant. I, I beg you, what, what did you just say? You oh, have to Kant, oh, yeah, I thought you said another word right there. Uh, what do you think I'm saying? I'm, uh, from, I'm talking to from my parents' house in Haifa. Oh, so uh, how, how do your mom and dad feel about you being a singing superstar? My parents are not here, they are dead. Oh, okay. Um, but, but you say this is though this is a bad thing. It's not. They are here. I am living in their house. Uh, they are here, but they are just not alive. They are lying in the bed, just like they usually do on Saturday morning. Okay. I don't take them out because they are happy. <laughs> now, how do you deal with the smell? Uh, how is that? Uh... Well, it's no different than uh, when she was cooking. <laughs> One for tomorrow. Okay, well, <laughs> well done on that one. That, 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 that's really, really good. Um, so, have you ever experienced terrorism, besides my, my words? Of course, I watch uh, the Academy Awards. <laughs> this is, well, this, what kind of, this is uh, what kind of terrorism is this happening here with this, uh, this go like this? What do we do this? We don't do this to other fellow performers, we are separate people. We don't have to go like this because you say this joke about your wife. Who, gives, who cares about your wife? She looks good. She doesn't look terrible. If she looked like, um, you know, it's, there are people who are in worse condition than, than she is. Like uh, you look at, um, I don't Wendy want to insult. I'm sorry, who, Billy D. Williams? No, well, Wendy, Billy D. Whoever thought of Billy D. Williams. No, Wendy Williams. You look at her and it's like, oh, okay, I'll make fun of that. I'm sorry, that's cruel. That's cruel and unusual. No, it's just, she's right. She's in the next room. I can't talk about her because she's right there. And this is why I'm laughing because I think, oh, of all the people you bring up, you bring up the one person. Who is staying in my house right now? Who oh, no. knew? Oh, Who no. knew? Good, good way to get over corpsing there. I thought, I, 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 well, very impressed by that. Uh, with Tamar here. Then you are easily impressed because this is not the uh, fit, uh, not uh, Jonathan Netanyahu getting everybody out of Ethiopia and then dying. This is not my trajectory. I, I would hope not. Let, let me ask you do, do you. Why? You don't want me to be here or rescue the hostages? I'm, 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 I'm. Yeah. Elizabeth I'm Taylor a... was a hostage. Was... Elizabeth... <laughs> Elizabeth Taylor. To marriage? What was she a hostage to? In the Ethiopia, in Entebbe. Oh, I mean in the movie. Rescuing. She was in that movie? I didn't remember that. She was Not in that the ABC was. movie. Wait, I'm... We're, we're... <laughs> it's the Israeli connection here. We're, we're, sort of, you're, we're having a time phase problem. Or as, as Rashi would have called it, a mind fuck. 
But let me ask you. you this, is a, this is only in Aramaic he says it this way. I want to know. So singers who influenced you, do you know anything about, I've always felt that the German singer uh, Nico should have covered Purple People Eater. Are you, are you uh, online? This now? is not because this has too many words for her. She doesn't have, a, it's also too fast. She doesn't do the fast one. She doesn't do the tongue twisters. True. She would do it. It would take eight minutes for her. One it eyed, would... one horn, flying. Purple. Yeah, it would just be. Really... That's not bad for an amateur. <laughs> do you, do you, by any chance, do you, have you ever tried to imitate Nico? I'm just... No. No. Oh, you haven't. Okay. Well, no. I so much for that. Did it... I did the rule of improv where I did not yes end you. Oh. I didn't do. I didn't do the yes end. Oh, oh, yeah, you did the no. You you killed the bit. I killed the bit right there, like uh, an abortion. <laughs> yeah, a friend of yours, Tammy Faye Starlight, uh, did a song about that that probably took some flack. About, have, you, have you heard about all that? Have you heard about the? Uh... I don't. Uh, it depends on if we are switching characters now. If uh, that is up if... to you. You. you don't have to, um, or or you can talk as Tamar. About as Tamar talking about uh, the other things that I do, it's uh, it seems a little disingenuous because this is not. But if you want to talk about other things like uh, Nico or Mary and Faithful or Tammy Face Starlight, these are things that uh, very esoteric performers that nobody knows about, but we make jokes because it's an in thing with us. But if you want to explain, uh, then I will I will elaborate. But otherwise you have to, you know, you it's like when you sit on Eral, you're not also going on on, uh, on Air Italia. You have to stay on Eral. Fair enough, fair enough. I will stay on your seat. I will, I will, I will stay on, on your flight. So let me ask you, any thoughts? Oh, but I am in first class and you're all the way in the back. This oh. is the only way I can travel. <laughs> That's the position I like to take, but you know. Um, this is what I heard from Will Smith. <laughs> Thank you, there we go. Just, just keep going back to that punchline and we'll see if we'll get a laugh. Um, Yafa, you're coming. <laughs> well, we're going to sit for a long time if we wait for this laugh. Yeah, true. Yafa, you're coming. your thoughts. I'm sorry, this I don't understand. Who are you talking? Oh, okay. Maybe you, you know she was a rather famous uh, Israeli songstress back in the day. Yafa Yarkoni? No? No, I know Naomi Shemel. I know, um, what's her name? Esther oh, Ophelin. Uh -huh. Naomi Shemel. She wrote Yerushalayim Shel Zahav. Uh -huh. uh, I know Esther Ophelin. I know uh, uh, Rita. I know... Um, Try to think about other Israeli. Aliza uh, Kashi, maybe. Marlene Dietrich. Aliza Kashi, Ken. Of course, Aliza Kashi. Okay, She's wonderful. Any, do you have any stories about knowing these people, meeting these people? Of course, but you have to come to the to the show to hear the stories about me meeting all these famous people. Like um, I know uh, Gugush, I know Capuchin, I know. Um, <laughs> Who's Capuchin? The, the monkey? You have to look up Capuchin. She was oh. a great star and she was a murder she wrote and then she died. Oh, okay. Hopefully not on the show. That, that would have been bad. She, no, she this was, it. she was, uh, she finished the episode and then later on she committed suicide. It's okay. not a good story, but this is where you go with your mind wandering about all these uh, singers who, Yafa Yorkone, I don't know this one. Let me ask I don't you. know. I know, um, uh, Amanda Lear, I know this one. I know, I don't know her honestly, but, but let me. As a well, Jesus. if you knew Amanda Lear, you should look her up on your computer. She's very, a uh, very talented singer. She's well, still here. You... Sorry, yeah. No, no, don't say sorry. We don't Israelis. We don't say so. We don't apologize. Being this Jewish is our way. To say we do thing. it, and then we say this is what's done. It's yeah. not uh, sorry. Okay, shut up. So. <laughs> <laughs> Not saying sorry, but here, here's the question. How does your singing and your performance differ from these other Israeli Shantutsis? Because it's better. 
Okay. Because it's also because I am here, Elisaka, she said something in 1973 on the radio that made her banned from Israel. I also said something that made me banned from Israel. What did you say? You won't be banned from here, you can say it. I said, uh, I said, I tell in my show, but I can tell you here if you, if you want. Um, אמרתי על רדיו חיפה שעופרה הזה משתמשת בשירותים כמו ערביה. No idea what the hell you just said. Well, can you translate that into Swedish maybe, you know, or... No, that is translated. This is already, already in the, in the Duolingo. It's, you can look on the bottom and you see uh, the little uh, owl pop up and it tells you what it means. So I'm, I'm not going to leave this alone. Can, can you maybe give me the... the... Streamlined version of whatever the hell you said because I don't have uh, subtitles on this. No, this I cannot tell you because uh, this is secret. Oh. But um, I can tell you uh, I have a joke. Please. It, this is not in the show. What does the Jewish pedophile say? I don't know. What does the Jewish pedophile say? Hey, kid, want to buy some candy? You see, this is better than the Ophaza story. Uh, that's too, yes, that, that's two, two for tomorrow. That's that is that's horribly. Did you can you use it. Hear, hear that somewhere. No, I did not make it up. It's a, it's a folklore. <laughs> it's, it's in the Talmud Habavli, actually, if you, if you want to look for it there. It was in the, the Talmud in Baba Kama. Well, there you go. I, I missed that. I, I need to go over that on next. You got to go back to Yeshiva. I can recommend some very good ones for you. Ramaz, Salman Shekhtar, um, uh, St. Patrick's. That's all the good Yeshivas. Jeffrey Epstein. You know, all those. Let, me, let me ask. We're talking about... The Jeffrey way. Epstein was very misunderstood. In what way? He didn't do all these things that they say, but even if he did, it's not so bad because this is what's going to happen anyway. So it's better if it starts early. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I'm just saying because he taught math in Dalton. So it's better to learn a little bit earlier the subject that he teaches was an excellent teacher in Dalton School on the Upper East Side. Excellent teacher. I don't know why he got in so much trouble just for doing this. Wait, I, we may be thinking of a different, uh, different Jeffrey Epstein here. I mean, I mean, no, it's the same guy. You look it up on your computer. He taught in Dalton one year. Wow. Wow. So, so did you ever take any lessons from Jeffrey Epstein when you were, of say, course. nine years old? Yeah, really? How, yeah, yeah. Did you learn, did you learn things? I learned, um, uh, I learned trigonometry. Really? Huh. Good. It's how to put different, and geometry, how to put different figures together. Yeah, I, I see where you're going with this. You ask for, you brought this up. You, as they say on Law and Order, you opened the door. I did. Uh, well, you certainly opened your, your velvet doors. But anyway, let's... We, uh, wow. they, are oh, not, uh, they are not... What is it? It's not a uh, Afikoma, and it's not velvet. It's just... Uh, it's uh, wholesale. So, so... God. Are you, are you married tomorrow? Are, are you... Are of you, course. Oh, Mazel, who's your, your uh, Mr. Tamar? He's sleeping. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, uh, well, we corpsed again. Uh, it wasn't even a funny moment, but what, um, well, who is he? How did you meet him? I'm, I met him on, <laughs> sorry. I um, just think it was a funny moment. I met him on El Al. Really? Really? And, and you just, were you sitting next to each other or did he spot you and want to get your seat or what? How did you, how, come on, tell me, tell me. No, he took over the plane. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of terrorism, so yeah, was he armed and dangerous? Of course. It was very exciting. And then afterwards you just... <laughs> yes, because he was not very good at this. So the plane didn't... Uh, we did not crash anywhere. We just landed in uh, Cincinnati. And then uh, these things kind of crop up. And I realized we have a lot in common. Well, yeah, we I, think I, I, uh, yeah. a lot of Jews should be uh, kept, keep their mouths shut. <laughs> 
Uh, you know, Cincinnati is is the most romantic place on earth. I found I found that. It's to be very. At, uh, they have the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Isn't that? Is it? No, that's Cleveland. Right. Yeah, that's right. Okay, Cleveland. Yeah, it's close enough. It's Milwaukee. So why did you tell me? It's Cincinnati. <laughs> I don't. I didn't send the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's the most romantic place on earth. That's what I you said. <laughs> you said Rock and Roll. <laughs> Oh, no, I... You said was born in Cleveland with Ellen Fred. You said Cincinnati. You can... I, I don't know what I said. I'm not even sure what the hell I'm saying. Sorry, right I'm losing everything now. Speaking because of I... music, speaking of, let's, uh, you, you mentioned the Jackson Brown song. What are some other songs that you're going to be doing at Pangea, April 7th, 14th, and 21st, Tamar? Uh, you know Moody Blues, Nights in White Satin? I do. Okay, there you go. We are that. doing this know. one. We are doing two Leonard Cohen because uh, obviously it's the Canadian connection. Did and you ever sleep with Leonard Cohen? Everybody else did. Did you, did you ever have a thing with him? No, it was not very interesting to me. Really? Really? Nico, Nico said one thing about him that I found very interesting. She said that um, he was... Uh, she, she she had Jackson Brown, she had Lou Reed, she had uh, Dylan, she had Jimi Hendrix. She said, no, Leonard Cohen, she doesn't want it. She says he is, uh, I think, according to the book, uh, that he is completely unnecessary. Ooh. But he was a good songwriter for certain songs. If we don't hear Hallelujah again, that will be a blessing. But um, we have two Leonard Cohens, we have... Uh, some Zegar and Evans, we have uh, a Marlena Dietrich song that she sings in Hebrew called Shiratan. We have uh, Jacques Brel, we have um, Paul Simon. Which, which Paul Simon song? It's uh, the Spanish one. It's not Cecilia, what the hell is it called? Oh, El Condor No Pasa? That one? El, it's what? El Condor Pasa. The condor passa, yeah, it's, it's like, it's a bird taking a shit, the condor is passing, it, it, no, I don't know what that means. This is how you interpret, but Paul Simon interprets differently. Does he? Does he? Yes, it's about baseball for him. He, everything he writes is baseball. I'd rather be a baseball than a bat. Yes, I would. Uh, what do you think of that? No, because uh, he says Joe DiMaggio. He is obsessed with this character. That's in another, so that's, that's in Mrs. Robinson. Right? That's what I said. <laughs> All right, hold on. We were just talking about El Condor Pasa, and now you're bringing up Mrs. Robinson. It's like, and it's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which is in, by the way, Peoria, Illinois. Just, just, just we're trying to get all this together. Is Peoria even in Illinois? We don't know. I thought it was uh, in um, Arkansas. I, there probably is one in Arkansas. We're talking with Tamar, ladies and gentlemen, here. Not Tamara, but today. I want to ask you, though, is it worth, you know, the, the cabaret life is difficult. It's not... It's um, very it's, hard. It's yeah. very hard to be in show business because uh, you don't know which, uh, which pair it's... Uh, do I wear this, this outfit from the Jacqueline Smith Intimate Collection or do I wear... My Hagar slacks. <laughs> can can you? Well, you know, a lot of cabaret things they they have a change in the middle. So when they go to eat, well, I am not um, Diana Ross. I am not. I don't. They don't do this kind of thing. The cat just uh, the cat is over here. She is dropping the jars of Vaseline on the floor. If you heard the noise. What? What? I'm just curious why there are jars of Vaseline. In, in your home there. More than one. Like, I because can... my husband is a big fan of David Bowie. And? And, 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 yes, and? Tigers on Vaseline. Yes. This keeps me from chafing. I love it. I mean, hold on. Well, do you chafe? Oh. Tell me because my, uh, my oh. father was a doctor. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Oh, hold on. Ah. Yeah, sorry. This oh. is very, very risque kind of behavior here that you have. Well, the, the camera doesn't show everything. You know, I, I, I'm not wearing pants. I'm sure you're not wearing pants either. Do you have a swastika behind you? No, that's a, <laughs> a number four. 
I go pretty far, but I don't go there. Where, where the hell is the swastika? Like, if you tell me this way, it's the swastika. No, it's a number four. How the hell do you get a swastika out of this? You tell me. You look at it yourself. All right, hold on. I studied geometry with Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> All right, hold on. Hold on. Oh, the other one, the other now one. Now I have a migraine. Okay, this is good. This is fine. Ugh. You can change a different color. You don't make it so uh, Hitler. When, no, Darren. So, so, hey, you must. Did your family lose people in the Holocaust? Any direct, like, grandparents or great-grandparents? My parents. Okay, yeah. Long, Darren. Yeah. So when I thought they were dead in your bag, how did you lose them in the Holocaust? Well, do you think they died? Yeah. I brought them over. Oh, you got their corpses and you deposited them back in the house. This is, wow. Well, How'd you get we, them through customs? I, I, I wonder. They didn't have that back then. Oh. They didn't have these kind of uh, rules where you have to look at your shoes. <laughs> True. I, no, I know. I know. So, this so the Holocaust. For, um, this uh, this uh, Twin Towers. Well, as a Jewess, as, as an Israeli also, how do you feel about forgiving Germany or, you know, playing in Germany? But what's to forgive? They may, they did this, they say, okay, we did it. It's like uh, the slap. We are going to send them out to the academy? No, they have to stay in the academy because who knows, they might get in the world next year if they make another uh -oh. movie. We have... <laughs> We saw Shoah. That was an excellent movie. Yes, it was. was Schindler's a little bit boring, but uh, very, uh, very cerebral from Spielberg. He didn't do so good with this West Side Story. Really? You didn't, why didn't you like uh, West Side Story? No, I did not say I didn't like it. It's oh. just he didn't do so good in terms of a world. He takes one world for this movie. Oh, well, you're still talking about the whole Oscar. Do you do any, any show tune stuff besides Braille? Which isn't really show tune stuff, but uh, it's not a show. To, I am not doing. Um, I'm not doing dear Evan Hansen here. It's this is not my style. I enjoy. Uh, I like uh, Lerner and Low. I like uh, Kender and Ebb, but uh, Stephen sometimes is a little bit. Uh, he's got the uh, scalds are very fancy and it uh, doesn't stay in the pentatonic. Oh, that is, you need to kind of, is your range is like five notes or how, how is your range in terms of? It's uh, very wide. Oh, it's, oh it's, it's big. Okay. Like three octaves, six octaves, seven. It's yeah. about nine octaves. Nine octaves. That is a, what, can, can you do like a dog whistle thing? I'll, I'll, hold on. I can't, my husband's sleeping. <laughs> well, it's not a dog. He won't hear it. Uh, well, maybe he is. He is really, I told you what he does. If he hears me doing these high notes, then he's going to come up and uh, go like this with the uh, with the Uzi, oh. because he uses even though he he uses our weaponry. Just have you? Do, well, you you must have been in the Israeli army, right? You, did you do your time there? Yes and no. Please elaborate. I know I'm putting you on. I was in the boxes. army, but I wasn't in the army. Okay. Vera, yeah. I I did I sang for the Palmach. Oh, very nice. Yes. Did they always request like Lily Marlene or what did you what did you sing for them? We did Lily Marlene a little bit, but we also did um in the year twenty five twenty five. Why that? I know you mentioned Zager Evans before. Why that particular song? Because it tells what is going to happen in the future. We have to be prepared. Okay. Oh. What um, What do you predict is going to happen in the world? I mean, everything that's going on now. Do you have any predictions, Tamar? I predict that um, that uh, Jada Pinkin Smith is going to uh, incite her husband for another act like, of violence. It's going to end up like Alec Baldwin. Okay. <laughs> Really? So keep the Uzi out of his hands, I would say. That's that's for sure. Just get a better, uh, check the, um, the, the, to make sure it's not, uh, you put, you put the, instead of bullets, you put um, like uh, Tootsie Rolls instead. So just to make sure 
you don't put the fake ones, you put it, because otherwise you end up, and now Alec Baldwin is having another baby with his wife, Vera Hilaria. Oh, well, I know that he's, he's got some loaded bullets in his gun, I'll tell you that. Seven That's a very, people. very good reference there. It's very quick on the take here. Yeah. yeah. Do you have, do you have little uh, Kinderlach? Do you have, are you going to uh, uh, children? I have cats. Oh, you do have, only, and that it will stay just, just cats. So. I can't tell. This, this is, this is for Hashem to decide. Yeah, absolutely true. Are you, but do, would you want, are you hoping or like, no? And I had one before, I didn't like it. <laughs> so so did you retroactively kill it after it was born or? or... No, I just put, I put it outside. Uh, Wednesdays they come. <laughs> it's the recycling, I love it. <laughs> oh, all right, we're, we, oh, so, wow. But I want to do the environmental thing, you know, so I put it out on Wednesday. Does it go in the green bin? Or only if it's turning green. I don't know how it, that... it goes in the green in the front of the the ones in the back are for bottles and cans. The ones in the front are for regular uh, waste and infants and things like. Yes, I. I, I get Whatever it's it's like uh, if you throw away, you have bad groceries. Your freezer goes bad, so you throw away the the pot pies, and it's the same concept. Absolutely. We're talking with Tamar. Now, we probably have only another minute or two because we're, we're waiting. Oh, it's a shame for you. Right. So let me ask you, Tamar, we, 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 <laughs> I want to give you this, this option here because we're going to have people come in to play the Today, Yesterday trivia quiz with Dave and, and, and these wonderful panelists of his. I, I give you the option of sticking around to play or maybe uh, if, if your other one, your friend Tammy is there, if she wants to play, what, what would you like to do? Whatever you prefer, you tell me you are driving this car. Do you think that you are capable of playing a, a game for an hour with people in... in if, I'm sorry, for an hour a game? Yeah, yeah, it goes on. It's a very... It me. All right. <laughs> I got to get my... Uh, I am almost finished with a book about uh, Steve Marriott. I got to get this book. Steve Marriott, the, the guy who Marriott, the Mormon guy? Who's that? No, it's from the Small Faces. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize it. it uh... Obviously, you don't follow the yeah, Hall the of know. Fame because you think it's in Peoria. Again with the you know, I better go because because we've already got people wanting to enter. So you're welcome to stay. That's uh, your, your typical state. They want to enter. <laughs> I wouldn't know from small faces. Look at the size of this head. But we have been talking with Tamar. She's saying <laughs> she'll be playing the Today Yesterday quiz with Dave and David Sheward and Leslie Hoban Blake. They're hoping she logs on. So well, let's just hear. I'm going to play a little bit more of um, your friend Tammy Faye Starlight and her song Ride the Cotton Pony. Are you doing this one? This is a very uh, deep cut. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I can't I can think of playing some of the others. I also, uh, I can't find much of your music yet. Oh. Um, can people hear your, your songs yet? I don't know. I got to bring you here. The Amazon is calling. Oh. I got to get the doorbell. You're getting the Hold doorbell. Down. Okay. Then let's watch this. This is going to be fascinating. Hold this on. Is, no, all I, I do is this. See? That. Shalom to you. Dave will be right back. All right, that's all I have to do. Now I have to get the Diet Pepsi because we're sitting here for an hour with this Mr. Gas. It's like a flight to Australia, this game. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here on Dave's Gone By. That was Rabbi Sal Solomon just before. Uh, he's been chatting with Tamar the Israeli songstress and chanteuse. She is staying with us to play the Today Yesterday trivia game opposite our good friend and our friend who's having a very bad year, David Sheward. Good morning, David Sheward. How are you? Oh, uh, unmute, unmute, bro. Um, gotta, gotta there you go. Hello, how are you, David? How are you feeling? Not too bad, how are you? How do you, I'm, I'm fine, thank God. Say hello to the, the Israeli Shantus Tamar. Hi, Tamar, how are you? Hello, how are you? 
Okay. Uh, are you in Jerusalem? Where are you right now? Haifa. Oh, okay. It's a very beautiful hill. You should come here one day after uh, I have the been COVID to, and the Ukrainian war. I have been to Jerusalem uh, and uh, visiting friends in Jerusalem, and uh, but I've not so been. Who did you visit? Uh, hmm? Who did you Who did you visit? Uh, uh, some friends of my husband who who live there. What are their names? Uh, Rachel and. Of Jess. course, I know her. <laughs> she's very nice she's very funny too she's yeah, very she, cute she is as a matter of fact <laughs> well so is your husband uh, Dave. so but david what's um, your husband's name maybe i know him jerry of course i yes. know jerry yes. <laughs> ah okay so by i the went way, to school with jerry okay <laughs> the dalton was it the dalton school where where jeffrey epstein was was that the, uh, for one year yeah, yeah, just for one year, I know. Uh, All it oh took. Um, then so we were at Ramaz. Now, David, you have, can I mention that you've had a bad, we, I mean, you. we know that you had a bad last year, just before Christmas, you were hit by a car. Uh-huh, yes. Oh, geez, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> you know the man who was driving tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I dropped it for a second because I felt genuinely bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that sounded very untamar like right there. Uh, Tammy, are you are you Tammy? Or are you tomorrow? Or what are you doing today? I don't know anymore. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Um, I've already given away so much of this, so much information. <laughs> sorry about that. Depends on the time zone. No, no, that's all right. Now, David, David, though, you can I mention that you've uh, got you know what? Uh, well, I have tested positive. I don't want to go into it too much, uh, but I have tested positive. I am isolating, uh, so I should be all right. The, the protocol is that you have to self-isolate. Um, I do and, it every morning in the shower, but yeah. Uh, but you have to self-isolate for five days, and uh, so I should be all right next week. But you're feeling, you look okay. You're well enough to be on the show. I feel like I have a, it's like I have a bad cold. Okay, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Jeez. I started coughing and um, uh, vomiting. Uh, yeah, losing. Yeah, I started coughing, feeling like I had a, a cold, and I took a home test, and uh, it was positive. Uh, so I went to a clinic, and that confirmed the results. So I have to stay isolated. Okay. Fortunately, I am vax fully vaccinated and boosted. And boosted, man. I, do you think you got it from the theater, or do you think you got it from class I, or what? I, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Uh. I mean, uh, I don't think I haven't been to a show in since uh, uh, Plaza Suite, uh, and I I don't think I, I I don't know I don't want to say. No, fair, fair, fair enough. But I hope you you don't seem so sick. But I hope you feel better. No, no, okay. it's like I have a cold, and I just have to stay isolated for a while. Right. So you didn't get it from Sarah Jessica Parker. No, no, <laughs> she was six feet away from me. <laughs> She was, yes. eight, you know, and I still got herpes from her. It was, it was bad. It was, her droplets fly. They do. Yeah, but I was masked, so. Uh, oh, all right. So it was Broderick. Maybe. <laughs> yes. Trust me, it was maybe Broderick. Well, was welcome back tomorrow, I guess. He was spitting like crazy. Because he could have been Neil Simon. No, he's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you never know. He you still never contagious. Cool. If he was still alive, maybe. Elaine Joyce, she yes. does. She could have done that. It. It's funny. A few years ago, I was walking down the street with my family. They were visiting uh, from Pennsylvania. And then my mother says very loudly, she points, says, Neil Simon. <laughs> and it was, it was him. Because uh -huh. there, there was Elaine Joyce right next to him, who I recognized from the match game. Right. And... Uh, <laughs> And my sister goes, mother, shh, you're embarrassing me. And I said, that's, you know, I'm sure he gets it all the time. And he just walked right past, past us with this sort of blank expression. Oh, he didn't even like wave. No, he didn't say, hi, how are you? Thanks I for think he was not the nicest of, of I mean, probably a bad guy, but I, I No, he, he was, he just, he just, didn't, he just kept walking, you know. I heard Elaine wasn't the nicest of, and I, I worship match game. Uh. Oh, wow. um, but I heard that she was sometimes, you know, could be a little harsh. Oh, uh, maybe. Ooh, I, didn't I don't know. I haven't heard too much about that. Well, let me, as long as we have time, because. Well, look what happened to Bobby Van. 
Yes. Bobby well, yeah. Well, he died, and he died, he died while died. he was married to her. Well, and no, so, that wasn't. <laughs> so did Neil Simon. So, oh, wait. Yeah, Larry Blyden. He wasn't married to her, but he hosted Tattletail. He hosted. He uh, hosted Tattletail. Uh, well, he hosted. Uh, um, What's my line? Yes, he hosted What's My Line, and uh, he was going to host another game show, but then he died in an auto auto accident in Morocco while he was on vacation. Yeah. That's not good. And I guess he was in jeopardy. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so much. Oh, my operation. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is how this game operates. I'll give you the rules because, of course, Leslie, Leslie will log on in like 20 minutes. But, oh. um, but we'll start the game. Um, Tam, what shall I... Shall I call you T? T. Um, let me get the rules because we've never played the game before. It's called Today, Yesterday. It's not all that, thank goodness, difficult. <laughs> so here's the deal. First, um, I'm going to ask you, our brand new friend of the neighborhood, T. Uh, can you pick a number between one and six and tell me what it is? For what purpose? Uh, um, you can say it in Hebrew if you want, but it, it, it's, you, I'll tell you what purpose. It, it, it depends on who goes first and when. All right. Uh, I'm not going to do this kind of a uh, joke while I say 11, so I'm going to say uh, three. Three. Okay. Tamar taking the number three. Uh, Dave, or, or yes, you are tomorrow now. Um, David Sheward, what number would you take? 11. <laughs> I took it. I knew because I was throwing it to you. Like oh, okay. I, uh, I will take. All right. I will take. Uh, let me see. Four. Four. Okay. Here's what's going to happen at this part of the game tomorrow. I'm. I have a digital die. You know, like a one-sided die. Dice set. Part of a, a dice set is a die. I'm going to roll it digitally, and it's going to come up a number, and then we're going to see. And it came up a number five, which is useless. So I'm going to roll it again. And it came up a number two. I'm going to roll it again. And I don't, I'm, I'm going to text Leslie here. I don't know what where she is. Um, oh, I just heard my phone ding. Maybe that was her. Oh, yes. Leslie writes trouble, obviously. Okay. <laughs> number six. Number two. This, this just goes on. This is the whole game. You just watch me roll sixes and twos. So we, Five. we do this for an hour. <laughs> There's a one. No, no, tell her then the, for the next half hour, Leslie tries to log in. It's the problem. And then you roll the dice. This is unbelievable. <sighs> this is three. Three. Oh, my God. Thank God. Okay. So I just rolled a number three, <sighs> which means that Tamar, you get to choose. Would you like to go first or at this point, second? You could go third. I'm assuming Leslie comes on. We can make you third. Which would you I'll prefer? Be, I'll be number three. So far, it's worked out really well. <laughs> uh, and so, David, by default, we're going to start with you. If okay. That's okay. Uh, All right. Just, just, Leslie's All right I was just pl uh, plugging in and getting my pad of paper and everything. Oh, oh yes, yes. And I forgot to tell you, um, Tamar, that at, for just for the tiebreaker, you'll just need something to write on and something to write with. So it's getting more and more on yes. the very complicated. Yeah. Yes. Match game was much easier. In match game, they provided the, the the markers and the cards. Yeah, they gave it to you. It, it, uh, that was the 70s when things were a little bit cheaper. Well, you can use menstrual blood and maybe some oh. toilet paper. Oh, good. No, you, you missed the last half hour, David, please. You, know, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but that's what you don't need them immediately tomorrow, although they can be helpful during the game. If you it could be with a lipstick, Elizabeth Taylor. No sale. Yeah. Where's that from? Is that from Butterfield you? 8? Thank you very much. I knew you'd know. Let me yeah. tell you something, Mr. Liggett. <laughs> See, that's it. very good. So here's She the... won the Oscar for this. She didn't yes, have to slap did. anyone. Because yes, it was because she had pneumonia. It felt sorry for her. Oh, exactly. Wow. wow. And she didn't slap anyone. You know? No, she, she didn't slap anyone, and she was very proper in her acceptance. Yes. As a, as a nice Jewish girl would. Okay, here we go. Here's the game, Tamar, and well, David, you know the rules, but it's actually very pretty simple, believe it or not. We've already, we've already spent like 15 minutes before we even started the game, but I will ask trivia questions, most of them multiple choice, 
They're worth two points apiece if you get them right. You're welcome to get them wrong. You don't lose any points, but huh. other contestants get a chance to steal the question and get those two points. Does that make sense to you, Tamar? What do you, what's the, what's the end result here? Do you get the car? Do you get the, yes. are you still Harvey? What do you, what are you getting at $20,000? Yeah, I just got a, I just got a, uh, a new Kia Soul. Really? The, <laughs> That's, our, our considering it's, that's not so bad right now because uh, everything in Korea is a little bit better than it is in Hong Kong where everybody is getting the COVID. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. But by the way, it just um, I think the prize at the moment is like 500 rubles. So it's a really, you know, oh, it's, it's a, a very, in other words, a buck 50. Very topical joke. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Buck 50, all right, here right. we go. Um, that's all that really, I guess, all there is to the game. If we have a tie, we have a tiebreaker, but we do it it's whether or fun. not. So, David Schuert, are you ready for your first question? I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. And by the way, Tamar, the other thing that you kind of, it doesn't really matter, but every question is tied to the idea that it's an event that happened in history on this date, April 2nd. Okay. So, for example, our first question, David, is 1792. On April 2nd, 1792. Passed today by Congress is the Coinage Act, or also called the Mint Act of 1792. It made the U.S. silver dollar the money standard. In this initial act, apart from copper pennies, silver nickels, and dimes, etc., three gold coins were made standards and authorized for production by the U.S. Mint. Which of these was not an original American gold coin? Okay. A. The eagle worth ten dollars, B the half eagle worth five dollars, C the quarter eagle worth two dollars and fifty cents, or D the dollar worth a dollar. Uh, okay, three gold coins in the fountain. Okay, uh, which of those is not? I'll say. The quarter dollar is the one that leaps out to me that sounds the weirdest, like they wouldn't split it up like that. Uh, so I'll say the quarter dollar. It's the obvious one, so I shouldn't overthink it. C. So letter C, you're going with letter C. Is that your final answer? Sure. Okay. Now, tomorrow you'll appreciate this. We had, like, if this were uh, NPR, you could play Three Coins in the Fountain. You know, my father dated Maggie McNamara. Ah. That's actually true. <laughs> oh, oh, she was the lead. She was yeah. the lead of the movie. Yeah. Oh, there was, I know it was a movie. I just know the Ink Spots song. Yeah. Uh, um, but anyway, that is your, your final answer. Yes. Um, well, I'm afraid you don't even get a quarter point for that, David Sure. Okay. Not, I mean, it's not the quarter dollar. These are eagles. So it was the eagle worth $10, the half eagle worth $5, or... Uh, you said the quarter eagle worth 250, but that well, really was. Okay, uh, sure. Okay. Or a dollar I, worth a dollar. So, okay. Tamar, you actually have a chance to steal this question and get two points. I think you should get the points because he paid attention to this question. <laughs> <laughs> My mind wandered. I, I, yeah. Maggie McNamara. That's really interesting. Was this in Hollywood? No, it was in Brooklyn. Uh, this was before or after she was a big star. I don't really know. I remember him saying that he dated her. I think it was probably in the early 50s or somewhere around there. No, it could have been. Maybe it was before she went to Hollywood. Yeah, it could have been. And weirdly enough, she gave him COVID. Who knew? Yes. How did that even happen? I don't even know. But T, um, you actually, you can get two points if you pick the one that I, is correct. What, what, are, the, what are the choices again? Yeah, you know, by the way, I will say that Tamar, even if you get no points playing this game at all, that's very normal. It's a tough game. We have a lot of contestants who come on for the first time and they don't get anything. So it's totally. And if you can't pick an answer, she should throw up her show. Yeah. And if you can't pick an answer, you feel free to just say, um, you know, Pangea or, or promote your show instead. But this is a multiple choice. You might as well take a stab. So again, on this date in 1792, the American government standardized money, including gold coins to be produced by the U.S. Mint. Which of these was not a, an original American gold coin? A, the eagle worth $10, B, the half eagle worth $5, or D, 
the dollar worth a dollar? Uh, the dollar. Is that your final answer? If it is, if I don't have to heal this question again. <laughs> ah, I'm, I'm going to take that as a yes. That's a yes. My goodness, this is very, very rare. But we have our new guest in the neighborhood on the board immediately hey. with two points tomorrow. Hey. Well, it's only because David uh, eliminated one, so my percentage went up. Well, yeah, it was one out of three. Really? So the they... It was sort of a trick question. Remember, there was a dollar, but it was a silver dollar. Oh, oh, oh you tricked me. Yeah. You tricked me. I did. I did indeed. But Tamar, congratulations. You are leading the game with two points. But we have a lot more game to go, as well, uh, David. I hear Leslie dinging, I think. Um, maybe on your phone. I don't see yeah. how to get on. Yeah, I, I'm too lazy to get up and look at my phone. Well, my phone says, um, in, in classic Leslieisms, not friggin' launching. Should I stop trying? I'll say, keep trying five more minutes. Say, try on her laptop or try her phone. Why don't you try your phone? Try your phone. Tell her, try your phone. Do your, sorry about this. So, see how professional this show is? Um, your. It's never happened on Match Game. <laughs> no. No, uh, Although Brett Summers did uh, occasionally show up late. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and and quite inebriated. Yes. <laughs> oh, you could tell when you could tell when the shows were the last one that they taped because right. they would go to lunch in the middle. Of, they would film five shows in a row. Yeah. And then in the in, after lunch they would drink quite a bit, so you could tell which shows were taped after lunch. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I, I know that. I, I was too young to even realize that. By the way, Tamar, I hope you, you're drinking, uh, as I am, your delicious soursop beverage oh. made by Rico. Mmm, soursop. It's, it's, no, it's, is this a sponsor? Yeah, is this your sponsor? No, 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 not at all. It's just, it's just, I saw this in the supermarket. I had to have it. No, tell people mm. what, what they, my parents' community drinks in Ridgewood. Yeah, it, it's, it's from a, a local market. Yeah, mm. some Dominican in Queens. It's actually not sour at all. It's very nice. Okay, let us begin, or let us continue the game with Tamar, now, or T. This one goes to you directly. So if you get this question right, you will be on the board with four points. So, are you ready? Of course. Oh, this is good. Okay. The year was 1801. Oh, yeah. In one of the <laughs> in one of the worst days for Denmark since Hamlet took up sword fighting, Admiral Nelson, trying to keep Denmark from allying with France, destroys the Danish naval fleet. Um in the Battle of Copenhagen. Come on, this can work. Sorry, I'm just trying to let Leslie in. Oh, yeah, Leslie. Um, according to CopenhagenDowntown.com, which of these is false about Copenhagen? A, it's home to the world's oldest still operating amusement park. B, when a Danish politician tried to post a photo of the town's statue of the Little Mermaid, Facebook blocked it because she was naked. C, Denmark refused to join. Hello, Leslie. C. Denmark refused to join the European Union, but still accepts the euro as currency. Or D. Copenhagen is home to the world's largest collection of unopened beer bottles. One of these is false. Uh, I will say C. You will say uh, any particular reason you're saying C about uh, the European Union? And well, because it sounds uh, the most logical, and we are dealing with this kind of European Union uh, right now with uh, with uh, Boris Johnson. So I thought you were bringing it up because it's um, it's au courant. Whoa! I don't even know what that means, but I'm gonna. Is that your final answer? It, of course. But I'm not going to change my mind. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> Jewish women do all the time. Here we go. <laughs> oh my goodness. Tamar is on the board with four points. Oh my yeah. God, she's got it. She's got it. That is absolutely true. And here's the reasoning behind that. Huh. Um, even though Denmark is in the European Union, you don't use euros there. You can't, they can go on the euro. Oh, I didn't know that. So that's, that's the reasoning behind that. 
Um, wanted to let you know that the Bakken Amusement Park has been operating since 1583 in Copenhagen. Um, and then let's see, the, um, the Little Mermaid. So has Coney Island. <laughs> no, Coney Island is younger. Yes, the Indians set it up. Yeah. Yeah, um, he's right. You know, this started very early with the cyclone. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Facebook sure. did ban. They're, 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 oh, Leslie, Leslie, you're, you're Leslie muted. is muted. Um, so Facebook actually banned the. Just little... the way you like me, David. Hello. <laughs> good morning, Leslie. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, Tamara. My apologies. Oh. Oh, the old one didn't work. I had to keep scrolling through the same what thing until I found night. one that worked. I don't know why. <laughs> Thank you, David. Thank you for that. So now this I might as well tell everybody since we're coming up close to 11 o'clock that we're playing the today yesterday trivia quiz with Tamar the Israeli superstar songstress with Leslie Hoban Blake and with David Sheward. So, I'm assuming I'm so far behind I should just watch. Well no no, no, no. <laughs> oh no it worked out because your next question <laughs> goes directly to you it's actually going to work oh, out. Oh okay all right. So let me just finish up the because I, I love this part. <laughs> And wait, for, for how long does this go on? Because I have to tell my trainer I have a workout session. I got to text her. What time is your session? Whatever time this ends. Uh, it, it, it probably about three o'clock in the afternoon. I was going to say five, but. Uh, all right. <laughs> no, no, you, usually it goes a little over an hour. I will say that. I don't know what time your session David is. David has an appointment. He has telemed, right? Well, no, that was before. That was last. I was. Or if you like stay that. twelve, you're probably on the safe side. Mark, okay. Mark, Mark, or Tammy, how long can you stay? So we'll, uh, we'll work you in that way. Or not. I can stay uh, till how about eleven fifty? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we're going to try and barrel through it. We should actually be okay with that. So great. All right. Fantastic. Um, yeah, we got a slow start off to the game. Well, we need to we'll, keep the tangents to a minimum. We'll, we'll, All right. <laughs> yes. If nobody has picked six, I will take six. Thank you. Oh, yes, I forgot about that. Okay, so Leslie Hoban Blake, of course, with six, um, taking the number six on the die. I just, I just, I do want to say that, yes, if you go to Carlsberg Brewery, they have more than 20,000 unopened bottles of beer, which is the largest collection of unopened beer bottles in the world. Leslie Hoban Blake, are you ready for your. And when those bottles pop, Carlsberg is going to be under, <laughs> under <laughs> beer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I guess I'll have to hops to it when that happens. Oh, that's terrible oh. to say the yeast. All right, Leslie, are you ready? Thank for, you, for... Tammy. You got the level of what the you got that right away. <laughs> uh, of course. Yeah, I've been dealing with this one since 10 30 in the morning. Oh, okay. I've been dealing with him since 1993. That's a very <clears> long <throat> time. I admire your fortitude. <laughs> He's a good friend. <laughs> About Rabbi Saul's first wife, what? Was she Rabbi Saul's well, Tamar, <laughs> did you ever have a, a thing with Rabbi Saul? Like, were, were you and he ever uh, an item? This is something that we don't say. It's going to be in my book. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's still scratching certain private areas, and he's always been wondering, you know. This why. is not my fault. This is uh, this was of Rahaza. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, Leslie Hope and Blake. Here's a question for you. The year was 19... You don't fuck with the Israelis, Dave. You know that by now, don't you? <laughs> of course. She's like, you don't do this because we have That's a... That's it. I am I, either way. Either I way. We gonna, I thought we weren't going to... I thought we weren't going to have... 1877. Leslie Hoban Blake. 1877 was the year. Making her debut in Europe under the stage name Zazel is Rosa Matilda Richter. What was her exciting act? A, um, I don't know why we're, we're being shown a pussy there, being shot from a cannon, B, hanging from a trapeze by her hands, fingers, and or teeth, C, tiger tamer, D, Foley Berger dancer and ecthesiast. She was known as Zazel. Z-A-Z-E-L. Wow. <laughs> Any one of those could be right, I'm sure. Um, wow. I, I have no idea. And how could I possibly have an idea? Um, 
I'm going to, hmm. Okay, given the year, I'm going to say Folie Berger, dancer and ecdesiast. Is that your final answer? Ecdesiast is a stripper, right? Oh, yeah, someone who takes off clothing. They wouldn't have been able to take very much off in 1877. A shoe and a glove would have been probably enough. Um, I'm going to go with that anyway. Final answer. Well, Leslie Ovan Blake, I'm afraid to strip you of your title in this instance, but no, that is not the correct answer. So I'm going to roll the die and we're going to see who gets to try and steal this question. Well, that came up at number six. And this is a number one. Oh, Jesus Christ. A six again. It loves it. Five. Does anybody, no, nobody has a five. God damn it. All right, hold on. Two. Do I have four? You have four. Okay. We haven't hit four yet. But we just hit a number three. So, tomorrow. Oh, good. Here's the question for you. I don't know. You were, you were disappearing. A cat was in your place briefly. I had to. Uh, yeah, I had to. Um, oh. I had to uh, fix my trainer. Oh well, we'll try and keep. We'll try and get you out here. I promise. No, but, no, it's it's fine. I'm just. Uh, you know, this is a very scintillating question. So please tell it again so that we can. To recintillate. Yeah, you, we, if you want to do your exercises during the show, that's fine. But while answering these questions, 1877 was the year on April 2nd, making her debut in Europe under the stage name Zazel or maybe Zazel, is Rosa Matilda Richter. What was her exciting act? A, being shot from a cannon, B, hanging from a trapeze by her hands, fingers, and or teeth, or C, tiger tamer? Wow. Uh, tiger tamer. Is that your final answer? It certainly is. <laughs> well, we may have a tiger king, but you are not, I'm afraid, the tiger queen. That is not the correct answer, I'm afraid. Uh, no. So, do we have to roll for fall now? Since no, actually, it's only me left. It's only me left, so we don't have All to. Right. All right. So my choices. What are my choices, and what letters are they? So you have a 50-50 shot. It's A, being shot from a cannon, or B, hanging from a trapeze by her hands, fingers, and or teeth. So it's A or B, right? Correct. All right. We've had a D and a C. You had a D and C? Exactly. You're not even female. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, it, but that doesn't help me at all because it could still be so A or B, and that doesn't the pattern doesn't work at all. Actually, had two C's, I think. Pattern hasn't worked for weeks. Was it, David. Was it number one a D? Oh, I'm sorry, no, it was D and C. You're, you're right. C. Okay, okay. So it's shot from a cannon or hung from a trapeze by her teeth. Oh right, hands, fingers, and or teeth. Yes. Ah, they may not have had the technology for a cannon yet in 1870, or maybe they did. Well, what the hell, the cannon, A. Is that your final answer? Sure. Hold on, hold on. Let me take a picture. Ah, it's a cannon. I get it. David Sheward, ladies and gentlemen, you get on the board now with two points. Yay. Excellent. Mazel, Zazel Tov. Because yeah, 17 year old Zazel was called the first human cannonball. Yes, David, what? No, I'm just. Oh, just oh, me. Um, even though she wasn't five years earlier, this is amazing. A guy dressed his adopted son as a girl and called her yeah, him Lulu. <laughs> as in the beautiful Lulu, the girl aerialist and Circassian catapultist. Wow. So cannons were like around in the early huh? 70s already. So you, you too, Tamar and Dave, you are both shot out of a cannon here in the game. Leslie, Indeed. you're not that far behind. Didn't, didn't work. I should just go home. It didn't matter that I even got on after all that. We'll see. Tamar has four points. David has two. And we begin the second round of our Today Yesterday quiz here on Dave's Gone By. The first question, though, goes to Dave, who can tie the game if you get it right. David, sorry. Uh, who can tie the game if you get it right. Are you ready? Yes. April 2nd, 1881, organized by Edgar Degas, the Sixth Impressionist Exhibition opens in Paris today. Which of these is false about Degas in later life? Okay. A, he was celibate. B, he was anti-Semitic. C, he was a drunken barfly. D, he was a misogynist. 
Oh, interesting. Actually, wait, wait, wait. Excuse me. Excuse me a minute. Um, just give. I I could be wrong about this. Yeah. I think. Um, it. Which of these is true? Yeah. Oh, which yeah. Is true. Forgive, okay. me. Forgive me. Which of these is true about they got? Okay. It's I screwed up. I, I, I'm so sorry. give them to me again. Celibate. I will. I, will, I promise. Which of these is true about they got? A. He was celibate. Um. Hold on. Drunk. Is it anti-Semite? Drunk and <laughs> misogynist. Okay. Celibate, anti-Semite, drunk, or misogynist. Uh, so I, I can wait, give wait, you wait. the answer for this one if you want a hint. Right, David. <laughs> I think I, I, true I'm, one, right? I'm losing true, my stuff. All true but one. Yeah, no, but I want to make sure because I wrote it one way and then I looked at it and it looked wrong, but now I'm thinking it is false again. So it's uh, false. Uh, Which of these is false, right? Hold on, hold on. Okay. One of these, mm -hmm. only one of these, I'm sorry, is false. Yeah. Okay, one is false. They're yeah. all, they're Celibate all anti semite. I'm, forgive me, I, I just lost my shit. There. Okay, right. so, so so we could be describing a lot of people in our yeah, modern yeah. culture. I won't stoop to that. Uh, celibate, anti-Semite, drunk mis or misogynist. Now, uh, I don't think he was a misogynist because he drew all those paintings of ballerinas. But that doesn't mean he wasn't misogynist. Uh, which of these is false? Right. The obvious answer is celibate, because the the obvious one, because he drew, because he seemed to love women with all of his paintings of ballerinas. Or girls. <laughs> I think it's true that he was. It, it, a lot of people were anti-Semitic at that point. A lot of people were drunk. So, how did you phrase it? Drunk in a barfly. He was a drunken barfly. A drunken. Well, maybe. Maybe he wasn't, maybe he was a drunk, but he didn't hang around bars. All right, you know what? Uh, the, I, I screwed up with the, when I went with my first answer, I picked the obvious one and that was wrong. The obvious one is celibate. So I'm gonna say that he was not, all right, I definitely think he could have been anti-Semitic. So many of us are, yeah. Yeah, the celibate thing, uh, he, he could have been, uh, maybe his wife died and uh, and he just idealized women with the ballerinas. Uh, this, is, this is tough. I'm going to say it's, I'm going to say, but he could have been angry at women. I'm going to say that it's false that he was, oh, it's false that he was a drunken barfly. Is that your final answer? Yes. Well, David Shurig, I'm going to drink some sour sop juice to you because that is the correct answer. Ah. Yes, indeed. Okay. I'm sorry for, for screwing up the, the telling of all that, but here's the deal about uh, Edgar Degas. Lautrec was the drunken barfly. Yes. Yeah, he was not. Toulouse Lautrec was the drunken barfly. Got it. Leslie got it. Well, some of the others were, but he was, he was actually, I wouldn't say he was a teetotaler, but when he had friends posing for his painting Absinthe, he had to have them vouch that there weren't a bunch of drunks. Um, he was also very hermit-like and antisocial in his uh. later years. And he once said, and this is a quote, that he <coughs> women, quote, without their co coquetry in the state of animals cleaning themselves. Oh. <laughs> Which, you know, have you ever smelled some women? But anyway. Oh, you know, dear. Last week, the, the weekend I went up to New Hampshire, up to uh, Connecticut, I, we went to the Catherine Hepburn museum yeah and they were showing a Degas film for an hour but of course we didn't have an hour to sit inside and watch a film so we didn't watch it so i didn't know any of the answers well it but i thought handy. you were going to say he was a celibate anti-semitic drunken misogynist that would have worked right it was, well he was almost all four he just but he was all wasn't, four right yeah. that's he was anti-semitic so yeah uh, yeah well score any, one for their side right we have a tie game we have David Short and Tamar tied in first place with Leslie yet to get on the board, but, but Tamar- Do you prefer Tamar or Tammy? Right. Either one. Okay. My, my, my real name is Tamar, but nobody ever called me that until I, except in Hebrew school. And then, sorry, my cat is going crazy. Um, uh, and My son's best friend is a Tammy named Tamar. Oh, wow. Just so you know. 
that's me. It's I yes, have such, well, it's not my, you, but you know, it's <laughs> all, ever since they were like fourteen years old. Oh. Now here's I do have a question now for, ah, for oh. Tammy. I will I'll, I'll just go with Tammy for the the rest of the thing. But if you want to okay. lapse into Tamar or Tammy Faye or Nico yes, or, or what's any. Your Hebrew name? Well, will it be Tamar? Is your Hebrew name Tamar or is it Tamuchlechich or something like that? No, Tamar is the Hebrew. Oh, we're back to that. Okay, here we go. Um, <laughs> we're never getting rid of it. Tammy, uh, this is an interesting, this question is a little different from your usual, our usual questions oh, on God, here. It's called Three Clues oh, in no. the News. Oh, good luck, love. You know how, how Joyce loves All right. It. Here's how this works. Um, I'm going to give you three words. They're not connected to each other, but each word is connected to the word that we're looking for. So um, if I were to do, what, what's my usual one involving? Uh, uh, but, but, uh, couch, sweet, couch, mash. Couch, vegetable, you might say, like sweet blank, couch blank, it's a vegetable. What might you say, Tammy Tamar? Like oh, I see what you're saying. I see where you're going with this, the potato. There you go. Yeah, that's how it works. So I'll give you, yeah, in, in Hebrew, how, what is the word for kartoffel? That's, that's German. How do you say potato in Hebrew? Tapuach adama. Right. I remember that. It's the apple of the ground. Oh, yeah. In French, it's pomme de terre. Pomme de, pomme de terre. Right. Same thing. So anyway, Tamar, I'm going to give you Damn it. Three, three words that are not connected to each other, each word is connected to the word we're looking for, and the word that we're looking for is somehow connected to something that happened in the news or in current events this past week. Okay, you think you can you can roll with this? I'm going to I'm going to do my best to focus on this question. Here we go. These are the three words, the three clues in the news. Happy, stick, bitch. Slowly. Happy stick bitch. This is a Jada Pinkett Smith. <laughs> <laughs> it's Adam Sandler. Okay. Is that, is that your answer? Is Adam Sandler your answer? You're going to go with Adam Sandler, are you? That's, okay, it's... Uh... Actually, Rabbi Sal was going to ask Tamar if she does any other Hanukkah songs, you know, so we can have something else besides Adam Sandler's... I don't do this novelty thing. Okay. It's very uh, tired. I, I know, that's why I was hoping that maybe you have another Hanukkah song at some point, but you did not... No, I have Mao's too. There you go, yeah. It's I do Mausaurus, actually. It's, it's mine, but... It's very cute what you do with this pun. Thank you very much. I'm going to roll the die, because that was certainly not the correct answer. Uh, um, we came up... Somebody had a... No, no, we had a... But he was in Happy Gilmore. Yes. What about Happy... Happy yes, this is true. I'm not sure... I'm, this guy is killing me! Uh, <laughs> unbelievable! Six. Are you a, are you a bunko party? Do I get extra points if I wrote down the answer before you asked the question? Wow. No, but that would be amazing. But I'll bet yeah, because you. Because it had to be. It had to be. And you're you right. were on the right track when you said Jada Pink and Smith. The word is slap. Slap. So it's slap happy, slap, slap, slap stick, and bitch slap. That's. Yeah, that's, well, it was my thought. I, 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 you, you were kind, and then you went off the track with Happy Gilmore, did, which is not. Yeah, I just <clears> want to get into these waters because I'm a member of the academy and they are going to call me and say, uh, you're filed. Uh, no, but he just quit this morning, you know. Yeah, yeah that's why I um, also I advised him on this. Like, uh, no, I was, no. this Chris Cuomo advising his brother and then. <laughs> Well, oh the exciting Lord. part of this is that we now have everybody. I'm on the board. board. Yes, that's Let's exciting. Tamar and David tied with four. So really, it's anybody's game at this point as we move towards the end of the second round of our Today Yesterday quiz. But now, Leslie, you can actually tie the game in a three-way I want a point for my slap. I'm sorry. This is not Dr. Sue. I wrote 
down slap before you ask the question. Never well, mind. It's Never mind. All right, all right. <laughs> Anyhow, but here's the deal. Seriously, you can. You, we can have a three. And I do love a three way. So here is your question, Leslie Hoban Blake, to end round two. By the way, so did Jada and Will. That's one of the things that was oh, yeah. that he was always talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, the year was 1914. On this date in 1914. Born today in London is Alec Guinness de Cuff, soon to be world renowned actor Alec Guinness. Although not poor, he had a rather Dickensian childhood in that he was illegitimate, his education paid for by his estranged dad, and he grew up with an abusive stepfather. No surprise then that Guinness ended up being in three movies based on books by Charles Dickens. Which of these is or was not a Dickens novel filmed with Alec Guinness in it? A, Great Expectations, B, A Christmas Carol, C, Oliver Twist, D, David Copperfield. Believe it was Christmas Carol. Is that your final answer? Yes, or I believe he was in all three of the others, uh, in all four, yeah, three of the others. I don't remember an Alec Guinness Christmas Carol. God knows I've seen about 8,000, right, David? Sure. Well. I hate to be Ebenezer Scrooge, Leslie. I'm wrong. That's not the correct answer. No. Shoot. What the other... was in the movie Scrooge. What were the other ones? So wait, wait. Well, like, um, let me let me roll the die and see who gets it. Okay. Oh, he was in the musical Scrooge, is what you're saying, but he wasn't. Yeah. Oh, that fucked me. Okay, got it. Sorry. <clears throat> you were right. fucked by Scrooge, <laughs> which is a horrible thought. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's the worst die ever. Okay, David Shuey, I just rolled the number four. Uh -huh. so now you do get to steal. It's either okay. Great Expectations, Oliver Twist, or David Copperfield. Uh, let's see, he or David Copperfield. He was in Great Expectations. Uh, he played, he was very young. No, John Mills, John Mills played Pip, and I think he was his friend or something. Uh, he was an Oliver Twist. He played Fagin. And I don't think he was in David Copperfield. He definitely wasn't in the one, the 1930s one with little Dickie Moore. And there was a TV version in the 70s with Damien Evans and uh, Michael Redgrave and Laurence Olivier uh, and a whole bunch of people. So I think it's David Copperfield. Is that your final answer? Yes. There we go. David Sheward, your copper has turned to gold. That is the correct answer. You are in the lead. He was not in the David Copperfield movie. He was in Scrooge and then the other two, as you said. So well done. This is Dave, big shock. David Sheward leading the game wow. here on this April 2nd. David's back. He's, he's back. In, in, that was in very impressive Alec Guinness, Alec Guinness knowledge. No, right. Well, it, it comes to movies. The two of them are actually pretty, uh, pretty amazing. What well, tomorrow? I'm, I'm curious. Real quick question: What would be your, if you had to pick a category on Jeopardy to answer questions about, which would you? What would be your like? Oh yeah, take, let me take that. Nineties country music. <laughs> There probably could be an actual category. I would know nothing about that. Yeah, yeah 90s country music, I'm very, very good. Also match game. You ask me anything match game, I got it. There you go. Well, we're going to match you with three more questions, you guys. Oh, you poor baby. <laughs> One more round. Of today, yesterday, today on Dave's Gone By. David Sheward, you are already in the lead but you can actually take a com somewhat commanding right. lead. If you get this question correct, All right. it's another multiple choice. And the year is, eight, uh, excuse me, is 1920. Born today in Santa Monica, California, is John Randolph Webb, AKA Jack Webb of Dragnet fame. Oh, okay. And also the TV producer of such shows as Adam 12 and Emergency. A jazz aficionado, Webb played cornet and also sang, sort of, as music listeners heard on his 1958 album, which was titled A, In My Arms Tonight, The Music of Jack Webb, B, You're My Girl, Romantic Reflections by Jack Webb, 
C, Tico Tico and Others, A Musical Voyage with Jack Webb, or D, The Story You Are About to Hear, Music by Jack Webb. Wow. And what year was it, 1958? Huh. Now, Tico Tico sounds, that's totally weird. <coughs> but it could be that. The story you're about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. It could be that one, but it, that's too, too on the nose. So it's in your arms or you're my girl, huh? Right. Those are the two remaining if you're not picking the other two. Uh, I don't know. The story you're about to hear is, is, is that. It could be that, but I think that may be something you made up. This is the city. Uh, <laughs> there are five million stories here. Rob, there are five million stories in the naked city, and you're one of them. And I'm, I'm the naked one, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll go with... So it's... Huh. I think it's one of the romantic, you know, because I don't, I don't know. I don't think he wanted, it could be that he wanted to trade on the, the dragnet image, but maybe he wanted to get away from it because he, if he said, this is the story, it'll be, people would think they'd hear dragnet stuff. Exactly. So I'm going to go with, uh, you're my girl. Is that your final answer? Yeah, yeah. Well, David Sheward. I'm afraid you're my boy. You have gotten two oh. more points. Oh my God. That is the legitimate Jack Webb album. You're my girl, Romantic Reflections. <laughs> that was, <laughs> Those antibodies are working, man. You're, you're doing well. That was yeah. Pete, right? That no, was, yeah, what? I kept thinking of some variation on Pete Kelly's blues. You know, that was yes. not the movie. Yes. He, right. it's, it's actually didn't uh, Peggy Lee. Oh, Peggy yeah, so Lee, Peggy you Lee. got it. Right. Who was nominated Julie, for an Oscar. What was her name, Julie? Julie London. London. Julie London. Thank you. I kept thinking Peggy Lee Julie Christie. I could. Was nominated right for an Oscar, and she didn't slap anybody. <laughs> now, if now, you know, later yeah. with Quincy Jones, different story. No. <laughs> I remember that. There you go. Um, you got to you read know? your book, Tammy. <laughs> if you want of course. Books, later on, go on YouTube and look for. Jack Webb doing trial level tenderness. He does them as recitations. Oh, I would bet. Songs. I would bet he does. <laughs> Do I love you because you're beautiful from RH's Cinderella? Oh, God. <laughs> when Sunny Gets Blue uh, is actually a Jack Webb song. I can as a recitation? Yeah. Well, yeah, in his Jack uh, When when Sunny Gets Blue. Right. <laughs> when Sunny Gets Blue. That's so great. Her, eye, her eyes get gray and cloudy. And cloudy. That's, yeah. that's how we would do it. That's Jack Webb. <laughs> By the way, that, and you will appreciate this, David. And, and Tamar, too, if you like puns. Um, in 2000, the year 2000, Rhino Handmade released a, a set of Jack Webb's recordings called Just the Tracks, Ma'am. The oh. Warner Brothers recording. Oh. I'm, 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 ha I'm currently having an image of a Rhino Handmade. <laughs> well, at least it's not a rhino hand job. So yeah. come, oh, on uh, 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 come on in, Della. Okay. <laughs> I've cleaned up, ma'am. What do you want? Does that feature do? songs by, by UNESCO? Is that what that is? <laughs> <laughs> Only on this program would people be making UNESCO jokes, I gotta say. But um, we used to have a picture of um of uh, Zero Mustel. In the bathroom. Is he in the bathroom or the, the bathroom. picture was in the bathroom? <laughs> it was in the bathroom of Ian, of, uh, I think it was Zero Mustel in, in Rhinoceros. Yeah. In Rhinoceros. Was Back this before? At Rhinoceros in the bathroom, I don't doubt was it. this before or <laughs> after your dad dated Maggie McNamara? <laughs> Well, no, that was a true. I, I can't tell because uh, the timeline is all, uh, you know, with with the space time continuum. It's. Yes. Yeah, I, mean, I don't yeah. have Facebook, so I watch this when it's on YouTube. I just watched Peter Noon. Excellent, excellent interview with Peter Noon, by the way. Last week. Oh, well, oh last, I'll tell excellent. You, how I saw you, you have to go back and watch that, Ted. Do you know what I? Yeah. I saw him in Pirates of Penzance. I wanted to see. Linda Ronstadt, but she was out. So I got to see, instead of Linda Ronstadt, Kevin Klein and Rex Smith, I got to see Peter Noon, Maureen McGovern and Jim Belushi. Oh, not, not a bad trio. I bet yeah, they were good. 
I, I, they were no Kevin Klein and yeah, but I'm but I bet they were good nonetheless. Yeah. Peter Noon was the highlight. Yeah. Go figure. That's that's wonderful. That's good to hear. He look he still looks good. That's you still have the hots for him, Leslie. You you were you were into Well, he looks like an old boyfriend of mine. I mean it's, it's obviously I have the hots for him, you know. <laughs> Well, and sometimes you know, you know, you look back at an old boyfriend and like, what was I thinking? Oh no, no, no! My old boyfriend has aged very well too. We're still, we're still in touch. He, he, he remarried. He's fine. Everything's cool. Yeah. All right. Um, we're cool here on the, um, or we're heating up actually the game of the today yesterday quiz. On well, the, I'm dragging the, the bottom over here. Well, David Stewart is in, is ahead now with eight points to Tamar's or Tammy's four and Leslie's two. We still have a couple of questions, so it is possible still for Tamar to tie the game. Let's see how this goes, because Tamar, this next question is yours. Are you ready? Or Tammy, I mean, is either of I am, I'm ready. Is it about the facts of life? Not the, the actual facts of life, but the TV show, because I'm also oh, really... Yeah. That has nothing to do remotely with it. And whether if it, if it would help to bring out Nico or Marianne Faithful, you can do one of them too. But either one, not sure. Maybe Nico would be the closest on this. The year was 1941. Happy 81st birthday today to Barrett Eugene Hansen, a.k.a. Dr. Demento, legendary radio host of Mad Music and Crazy Comedy, also someone who's been on this program two times. Which of these is false about the life and times of Dr. D. A, he's a train and railroad enthusiast. B, Rain Wilson will be playing him in the upcoming Weird Al Yankovic biopic. C, he wrote his undergraduate thesis on Alban Berg and Claude Debussy. Or D, for several years, he and his wife co-owned a macrobiotic food restaurant in Los Angeles. One of these is false about I am not a big uh, Dr. Demento person. I don't listen to radio very much. So I'm going to say um, D because this is the first letter of your name. Oh, that's okay. well, for you it would be Dalit, but is that your final answer? Yes, I'm afraid I'm going to get uh, the, the, this is the wrong xylophone sound. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Tamar, don't forget to stay demented because you just got yourself two points. Well yeah. done. Oh my goodness, what a game. What That's a game. how it works. Tamar it's six now. This is this is wonderful. Um and yes, Dr. Demento, as a as an undergraduate, did a thesis paper on Wojciech and Peleus at Melisson. Wow. So go figure. Um, yeah, that sounded real to me because uh, also uh, my husband did the same thesis. Did he really? Did he? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what? Did he find anything new about Bocek at all? Not really. It's just uh, he found that he wrote. He ended up writing a, a, a kind of a devo-like musical. Ah. <laughs> That's right. I think, yeah. I think Carol Channing is going to do the revival. She is. She's very. She's cast already, and she's very excited. Yeah. Because she can't do any more uh, motherhood mouth. She's already tired of it. <laughs> is there a part for Liza Minnelli in it? Well, she desperately needs the work. It, uh, she's she's going to play the the uh, the, the person. Uh, everybody says, "Oh my God, is that her? What's going on?" <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we go. We Night have... casting. Go ahead. <laughs> Well, Leslie, this is interesting because Tamar does have still a chance to tie the game, but only if you get this question wrong and she gets it right. But right, you, right. Well, the, well, and what are the chances of my getting it wrong, really? Very slim. Let's, let's hear the question first. <laughs> Thank you, Tamar. I appreciate that. No, you, you got this. You got the same. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Girl, girl power. I got girl it. Power. Here we go. Amen. The Maybe we need somebody to defend us and to slap the host. Yes, we got to get somebody to slap the shit out of somebody else for us. Indeed, yeah. that's, 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 that's what, what I'm that's, looking for. That's that's all. That's second. That's fourth wave feminism. I'm, I'm intending to buy a white horse for that person to ride in on it as well. well there you go. Uh, okay, here's a question for you, Leslie. <laughs> 
the year I got before. I got a wholesale horse dealer too. I got the horse right here. Over yeah, it's, it's, I was about to, I almost choked on this thing on this lozenge I'm eating. Yeah. <laughs> I was about I almost aspirated it. Go ahead. Sorry. All right, here we go. 1978 Leslie Hoban Blake was the year, April 2nd, 1978, in women's tennis, new champion Martina Navratilova defeats Ivan Gulagong Kohli in two sets at the Oakland Coliseum Arena. Gulagong would play a few more years, but also parlay her fame into advertising and product endorsements. Which of these was not a product endorsement? A, a line of athletic wear for Sears called Go Gulagong. B, commercials for iron-rich supplement Geritol. C, a Grand Slam line of ping pong equipment for Kmart. Or D, commercials for the secret recipe of Kentucky Fried Chicken. One of these is false. <laughs> I'm, uh, hmm. This is career th throughout her career. It doesn't matter when it was. Well, she was famous enough to be doing endorsements, but yeah, she wasn't no, old enough to do so, to do one of them, and so I thought maybe that would have something to do with it. Um, who was A for? Who was the athletic equipment for? The I'll athletic. Read again. I'll read A. A line of athletic wear for Sears called Go Gulagong. B, Here. commercials for iron-rich supplement Geritol. C, a Grand Slam line of ping-pong equipment for Kmart. Or D, commercials for the secret recipe of Kentucky Fried Chicken. Unless they put her in a goatee and a mustache, I can't understand why she would have done Kentucky Fried Chicken. The other three sound reasonable. I'm, hmm, I'm going to say... That she wouldn't wa have wanted to be involved with. Um... Oh, I don't know. Ping pong. I, I let's say ping pong. The Kmart. C. Is that your final answer? It's as good as any other. I've got nothing here. Well, you know, you were going back and forth and back and forth on that answer, and go figure. You went forth with the correct answer, Leslie Hoban Blake. That did not exist, the Grand Slam thing. So, Leslie, you get two more points. However, that... I'm still lo I still lost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that finishes the, the main part of the game, which means, David, with eight points, you are our champion this week. Congratulations. David, the Matt, Tammy, you probably know David is, is ill, and he still yes. beats the hell out of everybody. It's, it's, it's an amazing feat. David, how are you feeling, by the way? I know no tangents. I just like to have a bad cold, and I should be all right in a few days. Okay. Uh, Is this because the kids were allowed to take their masks off? I, I don't know. I don't want to speculate, but uh, I don't know. Did you did okay. you continue wearing a mask in school, or was your mask off, too? I did. Yes, I did. I mean, not. I wasn't as vigilant as I should have been, obviously, and maybe it would have happened anyway, and I don't know where it happened, but uh, I did continue to wear my mask. And, and you still got leprosy. It's weird. But anyway. ah. We still have our tiebreaker, even though it doesn't mean. He said he was <laughs> yeah, we, we thought your 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 strip turned blue, and you might have a little uh, a little sure debt. Or, but here's Tamar, you are very good at the. You, yes. you did very yes. well. Yes. Oh, to oh, that thing. Okay. In this crazy game, I mean, this is something you can walk away proud for whatever reason. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's only getting five hundred rubles. Yes, I'm, Tamar. I'm waiting for the whose birthday. Which country music star's birthday is it today? Because, oh, that, actually, oh. the closest to that is our tiebreaker. I'm not kidding, Tamar. So we're going to do our tiebreaker. Um, it works a little differently from the other questions because I will read the question and you'll actually write your answer down. And then I'll read the question again. I'll give a three, two, one countdown. And then you'll hold up your written answer to the camera, just like this. You can hold it up in Spanish, is this one? But um, that's the thing. So you're not going to shout it out. It doesn't go. It goes to all of you at the same time. Okay, you got that? Can I sign it like in Coda? <laughs> you can. You you can try. You can if you can decipher it, and we can. Yeah, yeah, and that that that's good. Just do just draw little hands, and yeah. And, you know. So it's not a multiple choice though. This is actually you have to get the answer 
the name of the angst right are you guys ready to play our tiebreaker okay. uh yeah okay okay the year was 1942 born today in lawton oklahoma is this grammy winning singer songwriter and keyboardist who started with delaney and bonnie and then gained fame when joe cocker covered his delta lady one of the performers at the fabled 1971 concert for Bangladesh, this rock and roll hall of famer, uh, that, uh, that name came up again today, who died in 2016, is best known for his classic, A Song for You. Who I is... got this one. I, I got to get a piece of paper. Oh, okay. Hold on, because I know it. There we go. Look at this. Oh, oh the question. You know, I should know this. Here. Yeah, lots of clues. And it kind of does tap into 1990s country, sort of. Uh, Not so much, though. What were the, uh, not born in 19, whatever? I'll, I'll, I'll read the question again. The uh, year was 19. Why don't you wait till she comes back, even though she has it? Why don't you wait till she comes yeah, back? Okay. Um, Let's see. Well, David Short's thinking. Oh, here, here she is. But now I can't. I'm gonna write it in lipstick. Okay, you 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 can do that. Don't hold it up till he tells you to. Right. I'll okay. give a three, two, one countdown, and then all of you will hold up your answers at the same time. <clears throat> so. I hope you can read this because right. it's in blushing pink or whatever. Just don't write it in Hebrew. That's all. No, no, it's it's uh, it's uh, left to right this time. Just don't hold it yet. <laughs> Thank <Okay>. you. <laughs> we don't have to read it right, backwards. Good. The year was 1942. Born today in Lawton, Oklahoma, is this Grammy-winning singer, songwriter, and keyboardist who started with Delaney and Bonnie, uh, and then gained fame when Joe Cocker covered his Delta Lady. One of the performers at the fabled 1971 concert for Bangladesh, this rock and roll hall of famer who died in 2016, is best known for his classic, A Song for You. Who was he? Three, two, one. Hold those things up. <laughs> oh my God. Whoa! We have a winner of just the tiebreaker, and that winner is Israeli. It's Tamar. Oh. Oh. No, great guess. I couldn't, guess. Think, of, I uh, couldn't think of the name. John. It wasn't, um, and it wasn't Liberace. It was Leon Russell. Oh, oh, I oh of him. course. Oh. I couldn't remember. I couldn't this think of it. This one I know because um, it's a little bit uh, music. It's, it's, it, it, it touches on musical category. Oh, well, the country music. There. Have you ever covered a song for you? Every, every Ray Charles did it. He did the best version. Have you ever done that one, Tamar? I have not. I think Marianne Faithful may have done it, but I can't remember. Oh, I could oh God, I love Marianne Faithful. What happened to her voice was the best thing that ever happened in the I whole love world. It. Just it's like it's like listening to a razor blade cutting it, trying to saw down a tree. It's amazing. It's, it's fab. It's I've done I've done a lot of a lot of shows as Marianne. Would you um, and I don't want to put you you can say certainly say no, but can you give us a little like a line or two or so or, or you need to you can't just do it like an impressionist. No, Marianne is it's not easy to do. It's not. It's she's very scratchy and she doesn't it, it does she it's very difficult to do Marianne. Or to because, do it faithfully, you know, which is, is uh, it, it basically comes from her navel. It's it's so it, deep. Oh, you want you want her singing voice, you know. The morning sun touched like the young, the eyes of Lucy Jordan. That's that's her. That that's yeah. Yeah. And by the way, if you want to hear, well, you won't actually hear more of that at Pangea over the next uh, couple of nights because you will you will be hearing instead the music of Tamar, Israeli songstress doing songs by Zager and Evans. Do it remind, please remind us like some of the, the people you're doing there. You're doing uh, Nights in White Satin. You're doing uh, These Days, the Jackson Brown song, but in Hebrew. Uh, I translated it and uh, we're doing a little bit of uh, Marlene Dietrich, a little... Ooh. Paul Simon, a little bit of uh, Jacques Brel, 
in that, that one we do in French, Hebrew and English. And then uh, we do a little Zegar and Evans. We do a little, uh, some Leonard Cohen's. Any wild man Fisher? Are you doing any of, uh, any of his? This stuff? is not in this show, last show. Last, I, mean, I knew I missed that one. Oh, well. Well, everybody go see her. Go to pangia.nyc, pangia.nyc to get tickets to see Tamar in person doing this music April 7th, April 14th, and April 21st. And, and I guess the other question is, Tammy, Tamar, do you have, uh, it's rather hard to find an actual website of your- Oh, I don't have, a, I used to have a website when I was solely doing the Tammy Face Starlight character, which was a um, right-wing evangelical uh, anti-Semitic, um, filthy country singer. She's very sweet. Um, but, uh, but that I, then I just didn't keep it up. And, um, so it's just Facebook and, uh, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter where, you know, I don't really have a very what big, is your, your Facebook handle where people can find it's, it's Tammy Faye. Oh, fine. Hey, Which if you think of Jessica Chastain who kind of stole this uh, from me because Oh. Uh, that's what she does. She's redheaded. What can you do with this kind of person? Um, no, it's Tammy Faye. It, it actually took it in the 90s from <coughs> Tammy Faye Baker because my name is Tammy and I was doing a country character and she was just so prevalent. So I just sure. took that. Well, everybody take yourselves to her Facebook page, Tammy Faye, and take yourselves to Penn. I can't Keith. take her to Facebook. I can't go to Facebook. Are you, do you have any other presence? I'm not on Facebook. Uh, Instagram. I, that I got. Oh, you do yeah. It, oh. Instagram, I might be Tammy Faye Starlight or Tammy Faye NYC. You'll see. And I'll, I'll find you if that's. Yeah. I'm really curious. I'm, oh, I, I think you're lovely. Oh, well, I think you're lovely. Well, as well. And I think I'm lovely. And it's lovely. To you know, you're not lovely. lovely. You're a lot of things, but lovely is not one of them. Thank you. Thank you. There's the old man Blake who will never be on this program again is you can you can see her on Critics Circle with our mutual friend. Oh, oh, we're back. We're back. The show is now two back. I'm back. I've been in the theater. I've seen two shows. Yeah. I, I was not allowed. Long story short, I had radiation last summer. I was not allowed to go back to the theater because I was immunocompromised, Tammy. And my doctor has given me permission as long as the mask mandate and the Vaccine, vaccine mandator, and so I hope I can get through April in the so. theater. I think they should keep it, but you know, I just... do too. They're keeping yeah. it to the end of April. I said yeah. I can and get through April, but I won't, is, and then... I won't get to all the shows that are opening in that case because a lot of them are opening in late April, and we won't get there till May. Uh, anyway, we just reviewed Plaza Suite. Oh, which is which is two hours and 45 minutes i'll never get back again yeah I, that's oh. what I've, I've read i think that seems to be the consensus i liked it i i enjoyed it i like all right i take that story. back out of the two hours and 45 minutes not counting the intermission i probably liked 15 but that was 15 amidst all three playlists that was not continuous 15. Okay. What did you so, think, David? David? Were you more more sanguine about Plaza Suite? Oh, I love the glasses. Oh, they're adorable. I, <laughs> you look about twelve. Uh, oh God. I enjoyed. Uh, I enjoyed the the second two pieces. The first one I thought didn't work at all. Uh, oh my God! I'm so the opposite. The I thought the second two pieces were purely fluff and just to be funny. Yeah. And that they were fine. The first piece I thought tried too hard to be serious, and it just didn't work. Oh my gosh. I went back to, and to look at the reviews in 1968 and Clive Barnes called it a laugh machine. Yeah. And it ran for 1,095 performances. Yes, it was a huge hit. Yeah. It was yeah, yeah. it was one of Mike Nichols, like he was just- he, Yes, he won a Tony for it. He, that was a big Yeah, hit. he was like unstoppable hit. at that point. It was a huge hit. Go well, name. maybe with a Mike Nichols type director. I mean, John Benjamin Hickey is a lovely actor. I don't know what his, his directing credentials are. I don't know. His best friends with Sarah Jessica. That's his credentials. That's, okay, well, that's a very high... Not the right reason for a director to work with someone. Sorry. It doesn't well, really well, work I'll, that I'll way. I'll say this. I won't give five cents for Mike Nichols, but you know, just kidding. That's oh, I get it. Little Nichols. Yeah, well, maybe you need alcoholics in those roles. <laughs> I well, think. That's true. Yes, you're right. You're, the you're very right. Night, at the opening night party, uh, Maureen Stapleton and George C. Scott got so drunk that he tried to flush her mink coat down the toilet. <laughs> that's, 
Wow. I just give him an A for, you know, uh, just the the sheer magnitude of that conception because there's <laughs> no way that he could do it, but that he, that he, I don't you think know, he thought about it, Tammy. I think that's no, why he did you say, it. Was, you say it as if he had a floor plan for how to do it. I don't I think, think that's he was the way thinking of Robert Browning. You know, if man's reach does not exceed his grasp, then yeah. what's in heaven for? I think that that's where <laughs> he was going with it. By the way, speaking of Maureen Stapleton's drinking, I played the lead in Gingerbread Lady in Stock. Oh, and wow. I think that Gingerbread Lady was his finest non comedy. Uh -huh. I, it had I, funny moments. It was a dramedy. It was an early oh. dramedy. Oh, Tammy, Tammy, come back. Yeah, I know. It Sorry, was... my, my, my power is getting low. I got to get my <laughs> job. Okay. Okay. Trainer, you have your training to do. Uh, but before we let all of you go, I've got to say that David Sheward, if you want to read his review of Plaza Suite, is it posted yet? On... Yes, it's on uh, uh, Theater Life and Cultural Daily. And I combined it with my review of MJ, the Michael Jackson musical, Ooh. which I couldn't see until recently because the lead had broken his foot, just or not broken, but had a foot injury. Yeah. Uh, so I was only able to see it recently. Cool. And yeah, I'm looking forward to that one too. I haven't seen that either. Yeah. yeah so that, they said they'd get me in. Like Beggar. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, Tamar, yeah. Tamar. Oh, no, I was just going to say, I'm looking forward to reading the reviews of these plays. Uh -huh. Well, you know, mine will be on, ours will be on YouTube. Uh, you'll be oh, able to see ours on YouTube. And mine is on, as I said, Cultural Daily and Theater Life. Cultural oh, good. .com, theaterlife.com. Also, David has a blog at The David Desk. Yes, The David Desk. I had I got 21 right out of uh, 23 Oscars. That's Whoa. better than almost anybody, right? I only missed adapted screenplay, an original screenplay, and I missed uh, animated short. Everything else I got. Uh you didn't very nice short that's yeah. how did you miss animated short um, i don't know i saw I know, four I know. I saw it's, four. It's, it's such a given right i, got, I, missed, I saw four, well, I did see four of the five nominees and i didn't like the winner as much as the one i picked but whatever yeah we, we like that sort of influence and i thought licorice pizza would get original screenplay over uh belfast but i'm glad belfast won yeah, I belfast was a chugger it was a real juggernaut it really i'm glad it, I'm glad it won amazing Wow. Okay. I haven't seen any of these, but um, wow. Well, I want to thank all of you for playing the today. Yes. Lovely before. meeting you tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you too. Tomorrow. So you uh, too. And if you feel like coming to Pangea, just uh, okay. Stop on by. Well, it's it's okay. very bizarre. Stop. Okay. And you can read my reviews. Uh, I have reviews from starting 2014 in the Times from uh, Charles Isherwood and Stephen Holden. Uh, oh. And Telly and uh, Jose Solis uh, last year. So you should invite Isherwood back for this because he's at the Wall Street Journal now. He just yeah. got hired there. I saw. Yeah, right. oh, maybe we Speaking will. of your your so Jose has my my giant white couch that didn't fit in my new apartment. Does he? And and uh, Stephen and I. Stephen was a, a cabaret critic for the Times for a hundred years, and that's yeah. I got to know him that way because I was a cabaret critic at one time. Too, oh, we're, so. yeah, he was so sweet. He reviewed. Um, a Marianne show, my Marianne Faithful show in 2016, 2015, and then 2016, he did a profile for the Times. Oh, how lovely. I'll go back and find them. I'm very, yeah. very interested, especially and, in her. Yeah. He was, <laughs> oh, well, you're very kind. Thank you. Yeah, well, the, some great reviews. Look for Tammy Faye Starlight. Look for, Tam, well, Tamar. You've got a couple of profiles of that character, too. Yeah, she hasn't gotten reviewed yet from the Times. They were there, but... Uh, no, Charles Isherwood was my first Times review for the Nico show, and that was yeah, the that most. Was oh my God, you did Nico also. I'm sorry to be so absolutely not. I no, no, no. Please, I got to go back and find all this. Wow. Oh, it's you know, but uh, I will ask Charles Isherwood because he was very kind. Mm. As as non Jews tend to be. So yes, <laughs> you've been watching um, the, this part of the Dave's Gone By show, the Today Yesterday quiz. Congratulations, uh -huh. to David Sheward, and um, thank you, David so Sheward. Feel better, please. Thank you. Yes, I, get I, better I'm, quick, dear. I'm okay. I I mean, I, I just like I have a cold, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, you look terrific, by the way. Yeah. What happened to you in the past. Yeah, I know. That's. Oh. I, I mean, just so, so long as it isn't the long form. My sister wound up with the long form, so. Definitely, you know, take it slow and easy. Yeah, she said. But you know, and then there's of course um, Tamar, Tammy Faye. See her at Pangea, April seventh, fourteenth, and twenty first. Well, it's not, it won't be. It will just be Tamar at Pangea in mm -hmm. New York. 
I want to thank all of you for playing the game, for being in the neighborhood. Now, give us those match game bye-bye things while I, I remove all of you from the room. <laughs> bye-bye, everybody. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, And bye-bye to Leslie Hope and Blake. We'll see you next week, God willing. And uh, to David Stewart. Feel better, man.